All right, we're now recording. Let's get the slideshow set up from current slide. And didn't was talking to the screen, so didn't see any questions on the place, but I guess started. Okay. All right. Last time we were in chapter two, and you did get a copy of the test, right? Okay, good. Um, for anyone who wasn't here last week, we did the I did uh, finally finished the test on chapter one and uh, passed that out. I guess it was Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, that's a good question. The question was, do you have to turn in all your work or just the answers? Um, I'll phrase it this way. When I'm grading your papers, if I see a wrong answer, I like to look at the work to see where you went wrong. Uh, two things come out of that. Number one, you get feedback about where you made your mistake. Uh, and the second thing is I get to see if you were on the right track, if this made a dumb error or something. I, give I like to give partial credit. And uh, if you got most of everything right, I can give partial credit. But if all I've got is the wrong answer, all I can do is mark it wrong. So in two ways, it could benefit you. Number one, show you where your error showed up, and number two, give you some partial credit. But do I require it? No, it's up to you. So if you want those two possibilities to happen, yeah, I'd like to have your, your work. But if all you wanted me to do is grade your answer, I'll just grade your answer. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm easy. <laughs> okay, so I'll do it whichever way you want. So it's up to you is the final answer to that, I guess. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Okay. So we're in uh, Chapter 2, Matrices, which we've been dealing with all along. Section 2.1, Operations with Matrices. And now we're talking about, at the top of page 46, Partition Matrices. Um, writing all this. Oh, you got your book in front of you, and I'll assume, well, no, I know some of the others don't, so let me go on and do it. Um, here is a system. A, X, equal B. Okay? Now, that's a system of uh, equations, linear equations. A is the matrix of your coefficients. X is the column vector of your variables. X1, X2, X3, X4. And B is the column vector of your solutions or the constants or whatever you want to call that on the other side. Now, that system can be represented in a more convenient way by partitioning the matrix A and X uh, in the following manner. Okay? Uh, and this requires a lot of writing. <laughs> Sorry about there. Here's A. And A is just like our always, A11, A12, A13, dot, 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 A1N, yeah, is what they're using as a subscript here, A21, A22, A23, dot, 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 A2N, A31, A32, A33, dot, 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 to A3N, dot, 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 down to A, M, make sure that's, yeah, 1, A, M, 2, A, M, 3, dot, 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 to A, M, N. Okay, there's your A matrix. Here's your X, like I was saying before. Now, X is a column vector x1, x2, x3, dot, 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 down to how far? x of what? n. That's absolutely correct, okay? And why is that? Because this is an m by n matrix that has to be an m by 1 column vector. So yes, that has to be an n. What is your b on the other hand? b is also a vector column vector and it starts b1 b1 b2 b3 
V3, and before we get to V4, never mind. Uh, we'll go down to how far? V what? M. Is that what you said? Yeah, okay. All right, VM. Now, that's not what the doctor would call it VM, but what in the world do we mean by this? Well, you see that if this is an M by N matrix, this is an N by 1, when you multiply these together, the Ms go out, you're left with an M by 1. So that's why it's an M. And we doubled the class size. Way to go. Nigel's here. That got recorded on Big Master Model 3. Okay. Uh, so we know when you're going to. No, I'm going to. So <clears throat> we're at the top of page 46 uh, in Chapter 2, Section 2.1. Um, now, and of course, when we do it this way, we will take this matrix, multiply it by that column vector and get an equal sign to this, okay? I don't want to write all that down again, but this multiplied by this equals that. Got it? Okay? Now, they just list B. They don't list the column vector, but why not? Okay? Now, if you did this multiplication, of course, what do you get? A11, X1, plus A12, X2, plus A13, X3, right? So when you do this multiplication, this multiplied by that, you get A11, X1, plus A12, X2, plus A13, X3, plus dot, 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 plus A1, N, X to the N, X sub N. Okay, now, uh, second row, first column, only column, uh, A21, X1, A plus A22, X2 plus A23, X3 plus dot, 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 plus A2 sub N, X sub N. Now, you tell me the next row. It's not a row. It's an entry. This is one single entry. It's a sum of a bunch of props, okay? But it's one number, okay? What's that next number? A31, X1 plus A32, X2 plus 33, X3. Plus dot 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 plus a three n x to the n. Then we'll dot dot. Oh, this is just one entry. Dot dot this down until the last one will be a m one x of one plus a m two x of two plus a m three x of three plus dot 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 plus M, N, X, N. Oh, that's just one dot. Time on, so that's just one entry. Well, this is exactly your B matrix, or column vector, okay? And you have, as we said before, M entries here. These are, each one of those long strings there is an entry. So this is simply B1, B2, B3, Dot, 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 down to B, N, M, sorry, okay. Now, now that's a lot of writing, isn't it, okay? And let's see what would happen if we were to partition this uh, somewhat, okay? If you were to take the first column here and multiply it by matrix, let's see what that would be. Oh, okay. 
if you look at this result here, these are this is one number, that's a number, that's a number, this is a number. But they've got a lot of terms in those numbers. Okay? If you look at just this first one, this is your first column here times x sub 1, plus your second column here times x sub 2, plus your third column here times x sub 3. So you could also represent, and you might say, why? Right now it just looks like a clever thing to do. It's usually not a very good reason to do something because it looks like a clever thing to do, but we'll do it. All right. We're now, Marcus is here. Three out of four. Know if Jonathan's coming or not? Okay. Um, let's continue. Okay, I'm going to wipe this one out too, I think. We're on page uh, 46. Uh, in chapter 2, section 2.1. Okay. All right. Now, finally, what this is is this column vector A11, A12, I mean 21, A31, dot, 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 down to AM1 times X sub 1 plus this column vector A12, A22, A32, dot, 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 down to AM2 times X sub 2. Plus uh, a one no yeah one three a two three a three three dot 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 down to a m three times x of three plus dot 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 plus finally a one n a two n a three n dot 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 down to a m n times x sub n. It's an ugly looking n. Okay, and that's equal to your b vector. I'm gonna get lazy like they are and just write it that way. It's the same b vector here. Now what they've done is partition our original a vector, a matrix, into column vectors and multiply each of those by the first entry there, okay? Now this, of course, is a m by 1 times a single number, so that's just like a scaling it, okay? Uh, plus the m sub 2, you have a, a m by 1, so, so this gives you an m by 1, plus another m by 1, plus another m by 1, plus another m by 1. You add all those entries together, you get the B1 entry, you know, and then the B2 entry, and then the B3. Okay? That's just another way to do it. In other words, ha, I like these other words here. Uh, our original matrix A times column vector X equal column vector B. Okay? Uh, let's leave off the column vector B for now. We'll get back to that in a second. What do I could have left my equal sign in there? If I could get this to come up. Okay. That's equal to, and now we just put the X1, A1, which is now that column vector, plus X2, A2 which is this column vector, plus x3, a sub 3, which is that column vector, plus dot, 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 plus x sub n, a sub n, 
that column vector there, and that's equal to the B column vector. And sure enough, this is a M by N times a N by 1 gives you an M by 1. This is a number times a M by 1. That gives you M by 1 plus an M by 1 plus an M by 1. All that, and that gives you an M by 1. Okay? And that's another way to do it. Okay? What this is now called is a linear combination of the column vectors of the original uh, coefficient matrix. Okay? This is just a, a value. It's actually a variable, an unknown quantity. Your x of 1 there plus the column vector plus x of 2 times the column vector of numbers. These are the numbers. And that's a linear combination. Your B is a linear combination of the column vectors of A times your variable. Okay? Um, and the vector and the components of your variable are basically your coefficients then. Sort of strange to have the numbers as the vectors, which is fine. But the coefficients of the vectors are the variables. Usually we have you know, your coefficients being numbers and then the other, the, the other parts are variables. This way it's sort of turned on its ear. So this leads then to, and I think I'll just start over and rewrite on a clean slide here. Uh, the matrix product A times X, A times a column vector, unknown variable x is a linear combination of the column vectors of A that form uh, the coefficient matrix A. Okay? So this automatically becomes an x1, a1, column vector plus x2, a2, column vector plus x3, a3 column vector plus dot 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 plus x sub n yeah 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 a sub n where each column vector is an m by one and you got n off now, um, and of course you know what these are. These are A11, A12, no, 21, A31, dot, 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 the A, M1. Okay, so every one of those has that characteristic. Furthermore, the system AX plus B, AX equal B is consistent and this system is consistent if and only if IFF, double arrow, whatever you want to assemble, you want to write out if and only if. The B, that column vector B, can be expressed as a, such a linear combination where the coefficients of the linear combination are a solution to the system. So this, so this is only true if this B can be expressed so ugly writing here um, as such a linear combination. Now, we haven't done that much with linear combinations yet. And that's why this almost may feel like it's just thrown in here without any context. Well, since we're doing it, they're throwing it in here, you'll pick up the context later. When we talk about linear combinations, when we talk about uh, linear transforms and, and other things in a subsequent chapter, then this will be more important. This will be something we can deal with. So, 
Let's go to an example. Okay, here's one. Here's a linear system. x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x3 is equal to 0. 4x1, boy, it looks like a pretty creative uh, matrix here, or system of equations, plus 5x2 plus 6x3 is equal to 0. 7x1 plus 8x2 plus 9x3 is equal to 0. Okay? Oh, no, sorry, sorry. Just glanced at it and thought this is a homogeneous system. It's not. That's a three and a six here. Okay. Now, to do it like we just did, this system a x equal b can be written rewritten as x one times the column vector. What's column vector? 1, 4, 7, plus x2 times 2, 5, 8, plus x3 times 3, 6, 9, that's all supposed to equal 0, 3, 6. Got it. Okay. Now, here's the part that makes almost no sense to me. Here we set it up this way, and guess how we go about solving it? Gaussian elimination. Go back to what we've always done, we're not even using that. But, hopefully, we'll come back to that. Um, so let's do our Gaussian elimination. Again, we write it 1. Y'all fill in the next one. Okay, what would be your first step? Gaussian elimination. What do you want to happen? Get one in the upper left. Got it. Bingo. Good. Can't say bingo in Alabama. What next? You want a zero there. How do we make that happen? How do we make it happen? Oh, it's been so long. Negative four. times row 1 plus row 2. Okay? Now, since we're using the first row, write it down. 1, 2, 3, 0. Okay? What's your new second row? 0. A little louder. Negative 3, is that what you said? Okay. Negative 3 again. Okay. Wait. Yeah. No, that's not right. I can't hear, so I'm just going by what I think I'm hearing. And then when I look at it, I say, huh? Okay, that would be negative what? Negative six. Okay. Next. Three. All right. Let's go on and take care of the third row. What do we want to happen there? on a zero. How do we make that happen? I know it's Monday morning, but okay. How do we make it happen? Negative seven times row one, add it to row three. Okay, what does that give us? Zero, good, that's what we wanted it to be. 
Say again. Multiply, yeah. Is it maybe negative six? Yeah, negative six. Next. Negative 12, excellent. And six. Okay, what's the next thing we want to happen to that? We want a one as the first non-zero entry of the second row to be a one. How do we get that to happen? Go bottom. Ne divide by negative three. That will make this become a zero. One, two, negative one. Okay. All right. For me to do that, I'll do it over here. Row two divided by three. Negative three. Okay. So rather than rewriting everything, I'm going to be very lazy and just change this to a plus one, this to a plus two, and that to a minus one. Is that what you said? One, two, minus one. What you said? All right. While we're at it, what could we do to the third row? Divide by negative six. So let's do that too. Row three divided by negative six is the new row three. Okay. So what will that be? You call it out to me. Zero. One. Two. Negative one. Zero, one, two, negative one. Anything pop into your head right now? Yeah, these two rows are identical, aren't they? Right? So that means, yeah, you can eliminate this by doing a minus one to Eliminate this, this one, by multiplying this row by negative one, add to that row, you'll get a zero, zero, multiply this row, okay, let's write it out. Next rule we'll do here is minus row two plus row three, okay? What would that give us? First row, we're not using. One, two, three, zero. Second row, we're using, but uh, not changing. Zero, one, two, negative one. Third row, we're changing by that rule. Minus row two plus row three. What would that give us? Zero. Zero. A little louder. Zero. Zero. Okay. What does that tell us? This tells us that zero is equal to zero. Yeah. When's that true? Always. What that means is we have an, um, a determinate system. A, I'm sorry, a consistent system but it has infinitely many solutions. Anytime your bottom row is something that's always true, infinite number of solutions. I don't know how long it's going to like that, but infinite number of solutions. In this case, that would be infinite number of solutions. So we can set our C or X3 here to be any parameter T, and we have x3 equal t, and x2 is equal to minus 1, minus t2, and x1 is equal to, we've got to plug all those in, but you can, uh, you can get 
you know, weekly back substitute. And you get back to the base. Now, I guess well, they did say calcium elimination, so that is back substitution. Okay. Infilling solutions, one of which is when that x sub 3 is equal to a minus 1. So let's write down the solutions. I was trying to get away from doing it. They don't, but they just pick out one that works. So we'll say x3 equal parameter t. What will x2 equal? Just said it earlier, but you do it. Negative 1 minus 2t. And your x sub 1. Basically, it's minus 2x sub 2 minus 3t. Because x sub 3 is t, right? 0 minus the others. But our x of 2 is already this, so that would also be minus 2 times minus 1 minus 2t minus 3t, okay? Which would be 2 plus 4t minus 3t, which would be 2 plus t, okay? Now, pick a t. Any old t. Frankly, I would have gone with zero. And if you went with zero, t equals zero, x1 would be two, x2 would be minus one, and x3 would be zero. They went with t equal, or x3 equal negative one. Okay, so let's put that in. If x, if t is negative one, then what's your x1? One, your x two would be t is negative one. Okay, yeah, that would be plus one minus one is one, so we got one one minus one. And sure enough, that was the solution as well. And that's one they did one one minus one. Um, so that means that your third entry here, I'm sorry, your, your B vector, yuck, this B vector here can be written as a linear combination of your other three column vectors, and there's an infinite number of those linear combinations. In fact, the one that would be 1 times this would be 1, 4, 7, plus 1 times this, that would be 2, 5, 8, minus, because it's a minus 1, minus 3, or plus a negative 3, negative 6, negative 9. If we did that linear combination, we should get these things. Let's see if we do. 1 plus 2 3 minus 3 is 0. Sure enough, that works. Because this is a number is a minus 1. This will be a 4 plus 5 is 9. Minus 6 is 3. Sure. 7 plus 8. Minus 9. 6. Yes, that works. And there's an infinite number that do work as well. Okay? But those are linear combinations. So again, you say, yeah, and what's the big deal? Well, it'll become a bigger deal later, okay? This representation of one column vector in terms of others is a fundamental theme in linear algebra. We just haven't gotten there yet, but we will. Just as you partition A into columns and X into rows, okay? It is often useful to consider an 
M by N matrix partitioned into smaller matrices. Okay, let me go to a clean page here. Okay, here's a matrix. One, two, zero, zero. Three, four, zero, zero. Negative one, negative two, two y. Okay. Now, does any portion of that look like it might be nice to separate from the rest of it? In other words, is any what? Okay, that upper four, two by two matrix uh, that makes a zero, zero. So we're going to partition, par, partition this this way and partition this that way, okay? And that leaves us a, you've got, I don't know why, but if you were dealing with it and it was easier to deal that way, you might want to do it. Frankly, I can't think of a single circumstance that would be the case but if you wanted to you could okay now this is much more common to do partition the this way okay okay and this is basically what we just did before Partition this into column vectors. 1, 3, minus 1, 2, 4, negative 2, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 1. Okay? That would be into column vectors, and we could then write, excuse me, uh, <clears throat> if this is column vector 1, this is column vector 2, column vector 3, column vector 4, then you could write this as a matrix of these four column vectors, C1, C2, C3, C4. Okay. I'll, uh, probably I'm interested in this, but just if you hear some growling going on up here, it's probably my stomach. This morning we have a, a dog, cute dog. She sleeps in her kennel downstairs, you know, cage downstairs. And she started cutting up this morning sometime after I got in the shower and my wife came in and said, the dog's scratching, I don't know why she's doing that, you know, and stuff. So she didn't go down. So when I went down, I found out why. Her stomach had gotten upset. <laughs> And it was a huge mess. And so the time I w would have been eating breakfast, I was cleaning dog kennel, okay? And lots of cleaning of the dog kennel, her pad, her bed, her the floor behind it. I mean, it was a huge mess. I got no breakfast, okay? Instead, I got to smell all that. And so now, and... One reason I was a little late getting to class, but no one else was here either. I grabbed a granola bar and crammed that down. That was my breakfast. So right now I'm going, oh, I'm no energy at all. So uh, I've barely broken my fast. So sorry, you probably don't care. But anyway, I'll tell you that. So that's one way we could express this matrix as a matrix of column vectors. Okay, partitioning it that way. Let's do it a different way, okay? Trying not to erase what I don't want to erase. Okay, we could have also partitioned it this way. And then this, you tell me how that would have looked. This we can call row one. These are now vectors. That's why I put the vector symbol over them. 
row two, row three. The reason I put this vector symbol, even though we're not dealing with vectors so much, but they are vectors, is the book bolds them. I can't write in bold, so the arrow over it means think of this as a bold letter, okay? So what would that be? Row one, row two, row three. That would be the matrix made up of these three rows. Four columns, three rows, whatever. Okay? Now, linear algebra applied. I suggest these or go over them or mention them because these are applications. That's what I mean, linear algebra applied. Many real-life applications of linear systems involve enormous numbers of equations and variables. For example, a flight crew scheduling problem for American Airlines required the manipulation of the matrices with 837 rows and more than 12,750,000 columns. This application of linear programming requires that the problem be partitioned into smaller pieces and then solved using a Cray supercomputer. Okay. Now, we don't probably have, you probably don't have one of those in your back pocket, so, uh, but guess what? In real life applications, they're all over the place. Okay. Scheduling flight crews. Uh, I think I already mentioned uh, before things like Google searches. That is one application, it's secret. No one knows exactly how Google did it. In fact, that's what the two founders of Google did. They came up with this algorithm that could search more efficiently, faster, bigger data sets than anybody else's. And they came up with it and probably have patented or copyrighted it or whatever. And it's a trade secret. Okay. Others have done other things. So anyway, tons of applications, things you may not have even thought about. But ever seen these Walmart trucks on the road? Oh, of course you do. And lots of other companies too. If you can imagine a matrix with how many trucks, how many stores, what area, you know, yeah, it's, and they got to have the right product going to the right store, you know, that's a matrix. That's a linear algebra problem for sure. Okay. Homework exercises 2.1. Do either one or three. Any of the odds 5 through 11. Do number either 13 or 15. Or both if you choose. Any of the odds 11, I mean 17 through 29. Um, 31 through 37. Do 39, any of the odds 41 to 47, either 49 or 51 or both if you choose. Do 53, do 55. Now, this book, and I see others doing it too, but it sort of aggravates me. They introduce new concepts in the problem, not in the text, you know, in the homework exercises, you know. They introduce a new definition, a new concept. That's on page 49 in ex exercises 57 58. They, for the first time, tell you what a diagonal matrix is. Okay? Um, it's a square matrix. Number one, has to be square. And number two, all the elements. Oh, the main diagram. Could this be a diagonal matrix? Why not? It's not square. It's a three by four. It would have to be either a three by three or a four by four, or some square matrix. Okay. Number two, it couldn't be because the elements in the main diagonal, uh, they could be anything. I want to say except zero, okay? And I believe I'm correct with that. Anything other than zero. But all the other elements above and below the main diagonal have to be zero. 
That's what we mean by a diagonal matrix, okay? For which all the entries that are not on the main diagonal are zero, okay? Now, so yeah, they can even be zero. So, I'll let you do 57 then. I would say do 59. 61 is a guided proof, so do with it what you want. It's a good thing to read through and think through whether you carry it all the way. That's up to you. Either 63 or 65, or both if you choose. Another proof in 67. Uh, then any of the odds, 69 through either 69 or 71 or both. There's an exploration problem, number 73. You're certainly welcome to look at it if you'd like. Not a bad idea to think about, if you, again, if you don't get bogged down in it. Uh, 75 is another proof, so it is a good idea to look at those and think through what you would have to do to prove it. And then you choose um, 77. Or, and some of these others are uh, subject specific. So I would say on these, pick the ones that are closest to your major or to your interest, okay? Agricultural, manufacturing, politics, population. Okay, well, actually either agriculture or politics, either 79 or 81 or both, but do one of those just to get a an applied problem done. Uh, I would try to do 83. 85 is a true false. I would take a look at it and think through the issues there. Um, Eighty seven is a good problem. I think that would be a very good problem for you to do. All right, any questions on any of that? 2.1. Let's move on to 2.2. What are some of the properties of these matrix operations we've just talked about? Here is where I really wish we had PowerPoint. Because I, well, what am I doing? Um, I know that last time I checked, Jonathan didn't have a book, so he probably needs this. So I'm going to go and write these out, but man, I uh, wish we had PowerPoint, then I wouldn't have to do all the writing. Uh, two on, you can concentrate on the mechanics of three basic matrix operations, matrix addition, scalar multiplication, and matrix multiplication. This section begins to develop the algebra of matrices, which involves those, but it's how you apply those. Um, and looking at some of the properties of those matrix operations. Uh, you'll see that this algebra shares many, but not all, of the pr properties of uh, algebra of real numbers. Okay? And here's 2.1, theorem 2.1. We're going to start this A, B, C are all matrices, okay? Not only are they matrices, they're M by N matrices. Not necessarily square, more than likely rectangular. But they're all the same size, okay? C and D scalars. Now remember, scalars can be any real number. Positive or negative, fractions or decimals, rational or irrational, any real numbers. Okay. There may be opportunity, in fact, one of those homework exercises um, did introduce some complex numbers. We might even say that they could be any complex number, but most of the time we're dealing in the real number system. So we're going to call them real numbers. Okay, scalars. Then the following properties are true. Just, this is all you need to know they're true. Number one, if you have A plus B 
Can you do that? Why? They're the same size. So, A plus B, guess what that's equal to? B plus A. And we call that the commutative property of addition. Okay. I'm beginning to lose it. Okay. <clears throat> Two. All three of these, A plus B plus C, is going to be the same as A plus B plus C. Now, what is that? Associative property of addition of matrices. You can do it because all three of them are the same size, and you can always add two matrices that have the same not just same number of elements, but same number of elements in the same places, okay? And these do. So this is the associative property of addition. Okay. Number three. And to me, this is a little bit of a weird one, kind of a stretch, but it's perfectly fine. C, D, the product of your two scalars, whatever they are, any two real numbers, multiplied by the matrix A, for instance, is going to be the same as C times D, A, which, of course, would then also be D plus C, A as well. Now, this is one form of associative property of multiplication, but it's a very restricted form that these two have to be scalars and that has to be a matrix. Okay? Now, of course, if that was a scalar, then that would just be associative property of multiplication of real numbers. But we're dealing with one matrix here and two scalars, and it doesn't matter if you multiply the two scalars first and multiply that by the matrix, multiply one of the scalars by the matrix, and then multiply the other. It's going to be the same. And that's a distributive, I mean, uh, associative property of multiplication. But to be a little more specific, of two scalars and one matrix. Okay, now, the book doesn't say that. They just say associative property of multiplication. All right, here's number four. Do you remember what the symbol I stands for now? Capital I? Capital I is the identity matrix. Okay, how do we describe or define that? That's one thing true about it. It's a good old L7. Told you that story, didn't I? Younger brother. Oh, yeah, you did. Okay. Square. To be in a Denny matrix, it's got to be square. Absolutely. Okay. Give me some other features of the, the identity matrix. A little up. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you're getting your, those, those are some properties of it. Oh, goodness gracious. My chair, grab a hold of my cord, and we're going to go yank my computer onto the ground. Simply, it's a square matrix. Tell me about the elements of that matrix. You know it's square. In this case, it would have to be an M by M matrix. So we go right here. Uh, there's a reason for that. So we call that IM. The book doesn't, but it would be IM. Okay? It's IM times A. Tell me about the entries of the IM matrix. We know it's an M by M matrix. It's got to be square. The 
elements in the main diagonal are all ones. And everything else is a zero. That's your identity matrix. Okay? Now, they just said I times A is equal to A. Now, what's assumed in that is the right size I. Otherwise, you can't multiply. Okay? This has been M by M to multiply by M by N because we know that's what A is. If you reverse that, then, and they're not going to do it, but let me say for A <laughs> should be this one. A times I is also equal to A, but there's a difference here. What is the difference? This I has to be in square of dimension n by n. Why? Because A is an m by n. That means the only way you can multiply is this square matrix you're multiplying by is an n by n. This one with the identity matrix on the left, that means the m by m times the m by n is going to give you an m by n. Okay? m by n. M by M by N gives you an M by N. Over here, if you have the M by N times the N by N, that also gives you an M by N. And those are, everything fits now. Okay? They didn't do this first, and this is just called the multiplicative identity. Okay, multiplicative identity. Just like the number one is the multiplicative identity for scalar multiplication, one times seven is seven. Seven times one is seven. Negative three pi is times one is negative three pi. It doesn't change the entry. I, one is the multiplicative identity element for scalar uh, multiplication. I, the proper size I, which is your identity matrix <coughs> is the uh, identity, multiplicative identity element for matrices. All right, now here's another one, five. C times A plus B. Anyone want to hazard a guess what that is? C times A plus C times B. Absolutely. What you're doing there is adding two matrices that are the same size. They're multiplying C by each one of those uh, elements in that sum matrix. So it'd be C A1 1 B11 one one plus B11 one one. C times A12 plus B12. You know, Every one of them has a C in front of it, okay? Well, that's the same as if you added C times A plus C times B, because then you can distribute that out again. So that is a distributive law of, and I call this scalar multiplication over vector addition. matrix addition. Okay? That's exactly what you had going there. And then the final one. Okay? And this is a little bizarre, but it's true. C plus D times A. Anyone want to hazard a guess what that would be? C A plus C B. I can't get that to disappear. I'm, I'm sorry, D A. Okay, plus D A. It's another distributive law, but this is of vector, mul I mean, a uh, matrix multiplication. That's not quite true, not the way we've been doing it, over scalar addition. Okay. 
we have you're a little limited by the wording here, but what you're saying is you can distribute the A ends of this song, C A plus C B or B A. Uh, so you can distribute the matrix over the sum of two scalars, just like you could distribute the scalar over the sum of two matrices. Uh, so I guess that would be the better way of saying it. Distributive law of the Matrix over the sum of two scalars. So it's not matrix multiplication, just matrix. So usually we think of it as well. Uh, so I think I'll just leave out the multiplication there. Distributive matrix over the sum of two scalars. Okay. Okay. So all they say is distributive property. We do two different kinds. The sums here of the matrices, which is distributing scalar across there, here are the sum of two scalars to distribute the matrix across that. Okay. Now, they do a little proof here. Excuse me. Uh, and I'll let you take a look at it. Basically, a lot of the verbiage I just said was how you approach on the, the uh, a formal proof, or at least the proof of it. Okay, either break it into the matrices into their components and add them and you know see that they do add that up. So um, okay. Preceding section define matrix addition as a sum of two matrices, making it a binary operation. The associated property of matrix addition now allows you to write expressions such as A plus B plus C uh, as either A plus B plus C or A plus B plus C. Same reasoning applies for the sums of four or more matrices, so you can just keep that process going. Let's do, goodness gracious, I'm feeling lousy. Uh, example one, erase all this. we didn't have just two more minutes, I would have to take a quick break. But let's just do example one. Oh, man. One, two, three, four. What's a couple of names for that matrix? A column vector or a column matrix. Yeah, very good. Plus, minus one, minus one. Plus... 0, 1, plus 2, negative 3. You tell me what that's equal to. And you really don't have to do anything special. You just do the work. Say again? Yeah, the top entry is going to be a 2. Very good. If my writing, if I can read that. Okay. Now, did you think, well, I've got to associate these and, and commute these and stuff like that? You probably didn't. What I did, I looked at this and said, I'm going to associate those two because those had to be zero. Zero and zero is zero. That just leaves me a two. That was pretty easy. I looked at the second one, I said, I want to associate these two. That gives me a zero, and then the sum of those two is going to be a minus one. But you didn't have to do it that way. You could do it just by any way you wanted to, okay? You can associate any way you want to. But just because I associated these two elements here, I associated those two in here, I did them separately. I didn't say, oh, I'm associating these two with those two and having to do the whole process. I'm doing an element at a time. So, why have this, all these properties when seldom you said, well, I'm going to use this one for here and that one for there. I usually don't do that. Okay. 
All right. I can see people are beginning to move a little bit strangely, so I bet you you think it's about time to go. We'll pick up top of page 53 next time. I think maybe you, we did get far enough to do something on the homework exercises. Um, I know you can do one. I think you can do, let's just try one, three, or five. Any of the odds, one through five. Uh, yeah, one through five. And uh, I think you can do 7 through uh, 11 as well. Okay. We might need to wait a little bit on the rest of them. So 1 through 5, any of the odds 1 through 5, any of the odds 7 through 11. Okay, good deal. We'll pick up the rest of that next time. All right, any questions?